I wasn't going to make bunting today, um, I was going to make something else, but I've just been invited to a birthday party, and where there are birthday parties there must be bunting. Hello and welcome back to the channel, I'm Jo Clark and this is Today We Craft. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make possibly one of the easiest things that you can with a sewing machine. You can hand sew this project as well, but it is just that much quicker on a sewing machine. Along with a glass of pims and lots of rain, no English garden party is complete without bunting. So without any further ado, let's get started. For this project, you will need fabric. Now the fabric I'm using is just standard cotton, but there's also calico. You can literally use any type of fabric that you want. Iron-on interfacing, not 100% essential, but very much recommended. In the end, I decided that the fabric that I was using was thick enough to not require the iron-on interfacing. And some fabric tape. This one is 24 mil wide and the length is just however long you want it to be. You also want a cardboard template. This is one that I've just quickly put together. It is six inches by eight inches and you make it just by doing the three inch mark up there and down there and just measure point to point and point to point and cut it out. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is lay out your fabric. I actually have three different pieces of fabric here. So I've got this nice cotton with a fruity print, perfect for summer, and a plain sort of calico cotton. I'm going to attempt to cut two at a time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay my, so I've got my fabric doubled over. And we're just basically cutting lots and lots of these triangles. And then you can either draw around it and then cut it out using scissors, or I'm going to use a cutting roller. But if you are using iron-on interfacing, you want to do this before you cut out your triangles. The longer you want your bunting, the more triangles you will need. We're going to need a front and a back for each triangle piece. And through the miracle of post-production, this is the number of triangles that you will need per yard of bunting. Once you have all your triangles cut out, then just give them a quick press to make sure they're nice and flat. For my bunting, I've decided to alternate the pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one like that and then the other one like that. That way, no matter which way you're hanging around your bunting, you'll be able to see the pattern. Take your two bunting triangles and place them right sides together. Pin or use quilters clips and sew along the two longest edges, leaving the top open. Do this leaving about a one quarter inch seam allowance. Once you've finished sewing, we're going to snip off the excess at the tip, just like this. Remove the pins and turn it inside out. Use a blunt object to poke out the tip. Last thing we're going to do is give it a quick press and then this particular triangle is done. Repeat this process for all your other bunting triangles. Okay, now that we have all of our triangles sewn, we are going to sew them onto our binding tape. I prefer to leave my binding tape on the roll, um, that way no matter how many flags you have you aren't going to accidentally run out of tape. Unless you're making bunting of a very specific size, say you're making it to sell or as a gift for someone or to fit a particular area, I would just say keep it on the roll, it goes as far as it goes. Now we need to leave some tape at the end that's going to be long enough for us to tie our bunting up. I like to leave a couple of feet just to be safe. So place your binding on a flat surface, place your bunting triangle on top and fold over the edge. You can do this with bias binding, but I find this tape cheaper. I'll leave a link in the description below. Once you're happy with it, simply secure it with a couple of quarters clips. The amount of space that you leave between your flags is entirely up to you. I just like to use something really simple as a gauge. And in this particular instance, I'm going to use something that I have to hand. Get it? To hand? So I'm going to leave three fingers of space between my bunting flags. Now, if you like, you can attach all of your flags like this to this tape before you even start sewing. Alternatively, what you can do is as these go through the machine, like this, you can then add the next flag in situ as you're going along, making sure that you're leaving that three finger gap. Which is actually what I'm going to do because I'm lazy and I'll do anything to make my life easier. Lots of lovely bunting. Um, I've got it well, for about one, two, about four or five yards of bunting. So this is going to look great at the party tomorrow, if I do say so myself, and I do. Thank you ever so much for joining me on the channel today. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you want to see more, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you next time.
If you have a moment, here's some more videos that we think you might enjoy.